In today's video, we're going to be having a look at the Wi-Fi motor blind by Zemi Smart. I'll hopefully be simplifying the setup process for you, and if you stick around till the end, I'll be showing you how to add it into Home Assistant. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. Before we get into it then, let's start this video off with full transparency. I was given this unit of the Wi-Fi blind motor for free by Zemi Smart. But I was never paid or even asked to create this video, so everything you see in this video are all my own thoughts and opinions. And with that said, let's get on with the video. So this is the actual blind motor that we're looking at. This particular model is the Wi-Fi one with RF control. If you're here in the UK, it's going to set you back about £50. If you're over in the US, it'll be about $63. And for anywhere else, it's about €56. Euros. You might have also gathered from the product description there, it's also compatible with the Amazon Alexa. Google Assistant, and it also runs on the two-year cloud service. Well, that's all good and everything, but what actually is it? Well, the blind motor is exactly that. It's a little motor that attaches to your blind, so it attaches to either your chain or pull cord, and when the little motor turns, it causes the blinds to open and close, and you can control this opening and closing mechanism with a couple of different inputs. So you've got physical buttons on the actual unit itself. You've got a remote. You can control it with apps like the Smart Life and Two-Year app, or the Home Assistant app. And you can also control it with your voice assistants, so your Amazon Echoes and Google Homes. Close the blinds. So you could write your own automations and scripts within Home Assistant. You could create your own routines with Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant, or you could write automations with the Tuya and Smart Life apps. And all of those mentioned things will allow you to easily create automations that will do things like open and close the blinds at set periods of time. And as I said, for this video, we're looking at the Wi-Fi model, but there are a couple of different models in case the Wi-Fi one doesn't take your fancy. In addition to the Wi-Fi model, Zemismart also create a Zigbee version. So if you wanted the same thing, but instead of using Wi-Fi, you wanted to use Zigbee, you can do that. And they also have a Wi-Fi model that makes use of mains power. So it's charged by the mains rather than using a battery. And I should also point out that both these models here use an internal battery. And we'll come back to those technical specifications in just a second. But for now, we're going to have a look at some B-roll of the product and we'll follow this up with a closer look at what you actually get in the box. Cue that B-roll. Let's jump into what you get in the box then. In the box you'll find the motor blind unit. This thing's very minimalistic and it's got a very simple design. On the front there's three buttons. You've got the open, close and stop button along with a little LED indicator. On the bottom of that unit we've got a set button and also a DC charging port. At the top of the unit you'll see a little arrow pointing up and it says open. If you slide this off the little cap will come off revealing the motor's gear. In the box you'll also find a wall plate and the wall plate simply slides onto the back of the motor unit and you can then fasten it to the wall. To help with fastening it to the wall you'll notice two screw holes in the back of the wall plate. You do also get a screw template but I usually forget about these and never end up using them. Next up we've got the remote for the blind motor. The remote connects to the blind motor unit using RF and it features the same button layout that you'll find on the front of the blind motor unit. The remote also comes with a magnetic wall plate so you can stick it on the wall and the remote will just magnet onto it. We've then got the Wi-Fi USB dongle and what this is going to allow you to do is to send a command from your Tuya or Smart Life app to the blind controller. The dongle will take your Wi-Fi command and convert it into an RF command that the blind controller will understand. You get a selection of different cogs that you can attach to your blind controller to allow you to select the right one for your particular pull cord or chain. My blind uses the metal beaded chain and I found that the default cog that was already attached to the controller worked best for me. As the blind controller's battery powered you also get a charging cable for it. One end of it features USB-A and the other end features a DC connector. The last little bits you'll find in the box then are some screws to actually mount the controller to the wall and there's also a little pin tool to press the set button on the bottom of the controller. 
So that's what we get in the box. Now let's have a look at some of the more technical features of the product. You will have heard me say that the blind control is battery powered. So inside of this thing, there's a rechargeable 2600 milliamp hour battery. SemiSmart claim that from a full charge, the battery life will last you for about half a year. Now I've been using the product daily for a few months now, and I've only ever had to charge it that very first time when I did the initial setup. Once you connect the blinds to your Tuya or Smart Life account, you'll be able to control the blinds with your voice using either the Amazon Echo or Google Home. With these devices, all you'll need to do is add the Smart Life skill and you'll be able to communicate directly with the blind. One thing I never tried with this device was controlling it with an RF controller, so something like the Broadlink Pro. If you've got this particular blind controller and you've tried it with an RF controller and it works, then let me know in the comments below. Support wise, the blind controller is compatible with a wide range of different blinds, curtains and drapes. It's also compatible with a wide range of different cords and strings, so it's bound to be compatible with something you already have. The blind controller unit itself doesn't feature any Wi-Fi, it relies on the little Wi-Fi dongle in order to give it that capability. Without that little dongle, it's just a blind controller that utilizes RF control. So that's what it is and what it does. Now let's have a look at how you set this thing up. For setting up the blind controller, ZemiSmart do provide you with an instruction manual on step by step on what to do, but for me personally, I found this instruction manual really hard to follow. Following these instructions, I found it particularly hard to actually set the open and closed levels for the blind controller. I feel like when you get to this particular section of the instructions, it kind of overcomplicates it a bit, whereas it could have been less text and it could have just been bullet pointed with a couple of images. So hopefully if you're watching this, this video makes it a bit easier for you to understand. And if this video does make it a bit easier for you to understand and it helps you out, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're not already, hit the subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. To get started, you're going to want to find out where on the wall you're going to want to attach your blind motor to. So you're going to want to hang your chain or cord around the blind motor and you want it to be not too loose, but not too tight. The easiest way to gauge this is if you just wrap it around it and put it on the wall and just hold it against the wall, then use the keys to try and get it to turn up and down. Doing this, you might need to just move your blind motor up or down, but you should be able to find a position where it can hook onto the chain or cord nicely and it will turn and actually open and close the curtains. Once you've found that spot, you're going to want to mark it up so that you can attach your wall plate. For me, I opted to use command strips and I just stuck the wall plate directly to the wall. The command strips are plenty strong enough to actually hold this in position. With the wall plate on the wall, you're going to want to slide the controller onto the plate and attach your chain or cord. So we should now have our controller attached to the wall and it should be able to turn the chain or cord with no issues. If you find that your chain or cord isn't turning very well, don't forget to try out those other cogs that came in the box. In order to give the blind motor Wi-Fi control, we're going to need to set up the Wi-Fi dongle. For this, I used a power pack and I just plugged the dongle straight into the top of the power pack. With the dongle connected to power, you'll need to wait for about two minutes, but after two minutes, the LED on the front should start flashing blue, letting you know it's ready to be connected to. Once you see that flashing blue LED, you're going to want to open up the Tuya or the Smart Life app on your phone, and you're going to want to add a new device. In the left hand menu, you're going to want to choose small home appliances and you're going to want to scroll down until you see curtains. You're then going to want to choose curtain Wi-Fi and you're going to want to just enter your Wi-Fi credentials. With the credentials entered, the app's going to scan your network and it's going to find the device, add it to Tuya and it will just appear in your list of devices. You'll notice that when the dongle's connected to Tuya, the blue LED will stop flashing. Pressing open or closed on your curtains or blinds in the Tuya or Smart Life app should now also cause the blind motor to start spinning. This next part of the setup is kind of the bit that causes all the confusion. So at this point, you should have your blind controller set up in either the Tuya or Smart Life app. You should also have it mounted on the wall with either your cable or chain attached. And what we're now gonna do is set the limit so that the controller knows how much to turn the little cog in order to open and close your curtains or blinds. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to close your curtains all the way. You can either do this by hand or you can use the actual controller. If you're using the controller, you can use the stop key to actually stop the curtains when they're shut. With your curtains or blinds now shut, you're gonna to wanna to press the up key on the controller. This will start opening them and once they reach the desired position, you're gonna to wanna to press the stop key. With your curtains or blinds now in the position you want them to be in for the open state, you're going to want to press the set key on the bottom, followed by the up key. You're going to need to do this quite quickly, and when you do it, you'll see the LED flash red. After I press the up key, I do press the stop key, but this isn't a required step. At this point, your curtains or blinds should be all the way open, and what you're now going to want to do is to press the down key to start closing them. 
Once they're at the close position and they're in the position you want them to be in, you're going to want to press the stop key again. With the curtains or blinds stopped, they should now be in the position you want them to be in for the close state. So again, we'll press the set key and the up key. And again, we should see that little LED flash red. And that should now be both your limits set. So now when you press the up key, your curtains or blinds will open all the way. And when you press the down key, they should close all the way. Before we have a look at adding the blind motor into Home Assistant, let's just run through some of my pros and cons of this product. My first pro then is the mechanism that's used to attach the wall plate to the controller. This is a super simple design and it makes it so easy to actually attach the controller to the wall plate, which is ideal for when you need to actually remove the controller in order to charge it up. Which leads me directly onto my second pro, which is the battery life. Now, as I said, I've been using this product for a few months and I use it every single day. So usually I have the blinds open in the morning and close later on in the day. And it's been doing this now for months. So I have no doubt that this thing's gonna have that half a year battery life like Zemi Smart says. And my third pro then is for all the different control methods you've got for this particular device. So you've got your voice, you've got the buttons on the front of it, you've got the RF remote, you've got Home Assistant, and then you've also got the other apps like Tuya and Smart Life. And I think it's great that you've got so many different control options because it lets you choose how you wanna control it within your own smart home. Okay, and on to the cons then. So my first con is for the charging mechanism. So with this device, it's got a DC port and it uses this big old chunky DC connector. Now, I'm not sure why they went with this specific connector and why it couldn't just be a USB-C or some other type of USB. As it's battery powered and the battery's supposed to last for half a year, I'm now gonna have to remember where I put this cable and then in six months time, I'm gonna have to try and find it again. And this is by no means a big issue, but it would be nice if it was a different connector. So my next con is also to do with the battery and it's the fact that this particular model doesn't report its battery level. I was hoping you'd be able to see the device battery level within the Smart Life or Tuya app, but you can't. Now, I don't know if that's a device limitation or if it just hasn't been added to the app yet, but how it's gonna currently work is I'm gonna ask it to open and close the blinds every day and then one day it just won't do it and I'll know that the battery's dead. It'd be interesting to see if the Zigbee model reported the battery level. So if you've got the Zigbee version of it, let me know in the description if that one reports the battery level. And my third con then is the instructions for this product. The instructions for this product need a major overhaul. They either need to be rewritten or just redesigned and restructured so that they make more sense. My original setup for this product definitely wasn't seconds. It was more like an hour and a bit. And that comes down to those poor instructions. So if they were better laid out or just better worded, then I probably would have done it much, much quicker. So what's the final verdict then? Should you buy one of these devices? If you're after a reliable device that can open a range of different curtains and blinds and you're not put off by any of those cons that I mentioned, then this could be the device you're looking for. I am by no means a blinds and curtains expert, but my experience so far with this product has only been good. It's got great compatibility and works well with your existing smart home systems and devices. And that compatibility and flexibility is what we want with smart homes. One thing I'm still yet to try is being able to control it with an RF device, as I previously mentioned. So if that works, that's another input and control that's going to be great for it. If I had the option to switch this unit, I probably would switch over to the Zigbee version so that everything was all in one uniform body and you wouldn't need to make use of a Wi-Fi dongle. If the option for being able to view the battery life was also added, that would be great because you'd be able to set up your own automations and scripts to alert you when the blind motor needs charging. So again, if you're after a reliable device that's not gonna break the bank, has great compatibility and a simple setup, then I would recommend this one. Okay then, let's have a quick look at how to get this thing into Home Assistant and then we'll wrap this up. Getting the blind motor added into Home Assistant is super simple. All you'll need to do is add either the Tuya or the Tuya V2 integration and just sign into your Tuya or Smart Life account. This will then pull that blind motor in and you'll be able to see it in Home Assistant. If you need any extra help on setting up either of these two integrations, I've created videos on both and you can find links to them in the description below. The Tuya V2 integration is currently in beta and I've actually run into a few issues with using that integration and the blind motor. Now I have opened up an issue for this so hopefully it's not too long before it's fixed. I'll have a link to that issue in the description below, so if you wanna check the status on that, you can do. And just to clarify, this is an issue with the two-year integration and not the blind motor. Home Assistant will see the blinds as a device and you'll be able to do things like open and close them and also stop them mid-open or mid-close. With the V2 integration, you'll also be able to set the position of the blinds, so you'll be able to set how much you want to open or how much you want to close them. 
And as it's a device in Home Assistant, you'd be able to do things like add automations, scenes and scripts to that particular device. You could make an automation that causes the blinds to open and close depending on sunrise or sunset. Or if you want to have them open and close at a specific time on a set day, you can also do that. Again, you get all the power of Home Assistant to create whatever automation and script you want for your blinds. And if you're not a fan of writing your automations and scripts in YAML or using the automation editor, then you can also make use of Node-RED. And that's just about it for today's video. Hopefully you found it interesting and informative. And if you were struggling with this particular blind motor, hopefully you've now got it working. If you are stuck and need some additional help, then let me know in the comments below. Additionally, you can head over to my Facebook page and you can share some more information on there. If you're new around here and want to see some more Home Assistant or tech videos from me, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. A few days ago, I put out this little trailer video which highlights some upcoming tech and projects on my channel. So if you're interested in having a sneak peek at some of the upcoming things, then go and check that out. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons. If you're interested in supporting my channel and becoming one of these awesome dudes, there'll be a link to my Patreon in the description below. But thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.